graphing absolute value functions by transforming the parent function. Let's start with a Frere vocabulary model. This is a graphic organizer that will help us understand the absolute value parent function. The equation is y equals the absolute value of x. You will also see it this way. And we say in words f of x equals the absolute value of x. So what we want to do in our table is in place of y, we'll write the absolute value of x. And so for each x value, we will take the absolute value of that x value to get the corresponding y. So f of 2 is 2, f of 1 is 1, f of 0 is 0, f of negative 1 is 1 because the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2, and the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. What we can do next is plot these ordered pairs. We'll start with 3, 3. From our origin, we go 3 to the right and 3 up. Let's plot 2, 2, and then 1, 1. And this point 0, 0, you will notice this is a turning point, because when we go to plot negative 1, 1, the graph changes direction then negative 2, comma 2, and negative 3, comma 3. It's safe to say that we can connect these points with a straight line because fractional values would be allowed. And it will go forever to the right for this piece of the curve and forever to the left for this piece of the curve. So now what we can do is look for characteristics. The first thing that jumps out is the graph is shaped like a V. There is symmetry in the graph, so the left-hand side matches the right-hand side. There's also symmetry in the table. And the turning point, we can see in the table and in the graph, for the parent function, the vertex is at 0, 0. The y values will be non-negative, and the function has two linear pieces. We call this a piecewise function. What we want to do is take what we know about this parent absolute value function and we want to graph other absolute value functions on the same coordinate plane as the parent function. So here I have the parent function y equals the absolute value of x. I'd like to also graph on this coordinate plane y equals negative the absolute value of x. And I can use a graphing utility like Desmos or a graphing calculator. And I can note that the curve will look like this. So y equals negative the absolute value of x is a reflection of the parent function across the x-axis. Let's do another example. y equals the absolute value of x minus 3. When I type this into Desmos, the picture that results looks like this red graph. So what we notice is we have a vertical shift of the parent function. It happens to be three units down. Notice in the equation form, the minus three is outside of the absolute value bars. Let's look at another example. y equals the absolute value of x minus two. If I were to type this into Desmos, I would get a function that looks like this. We can see this one is a horizontal shift of the parent function. Oddly enough, this one is two units to the right, even though inside of the absolute value bars it says x minus 2. That is because the value of x that would make that y term 0 is 2. So I'm going 2 to the right. Here's a shift y equals 3 times the absolute value of x. Now, am I shifting this? Am I reflecting it? Am I moving it? Or am I stretching it? Well, when I graph this using Desmos, I can see what's happening is the resulting curve will be 3 times steeper than the parent function. The slope of the parent function is 1 and negative 1. The slope of this particular function is 3 and negative 3. And that happens when you have a number being multiplied by the absolute value expression. It will change the steepness. Here, let's take a look at y equals negative the absolute value of x plus 4. Let's try to predict what this graph would look like. The first thing I notice, because of that negative sign out front, 
this graph will be reflected across the x-axis. And then because of the plus 4, it's going to be shifted 4 units up from there. So here's the first piece when it's reflected across the x-axis and then shifted 4 units up. This is what the resulting function would look like. Let's look at another example. y equals the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 5. So there's going to be two shifts here. There's going to be a horizontal shift and then a vertical shift. The horizontal shift is going to be two units to the left because of that plus two inside the bars. And then it will be shifted five units down. So let's start with our horizontal shift. It would go like this, and then the vertical shift five units down from there. Notice the vertex of this curve would be at the point negative two, negative five. So another common type of prompt is we give you the graph of an absolute value function and we're asking you to come up with the equation of the function. First thing you want to notice is how does this function compare to the parent function? Well, the steepness is the same, right? So the slope is 1 and negative 1, so that doesn't change. But my vertex is shifted 2 units to the right and then 1 unit up. So inside my absolute value bars, I'm going to have a minus 2, and outside of the bars, it'll be plus 1. This is the equation. Let's have another example. This one we can see is reflected ac across the x-axis, so there's going to be a negative sign out in front of the absolute value bars. And it's also shifted 2 units up from there, so there'll be a plus 2 outside of the bars. So this equation looks like y equals negative the absolute value of x plus 2. And we'll do one last example together. What's the story with this graph? Well, the, there is a horizontal shift that has taken place, 5 units to the left. And this one is not the same steepness, right? The slope is, instead of 1 and negative 1, the slope is 2 and negative 2. So it's 2 times as steep. Therefore, the 2 times as steep, the 2 gets multiplied by the absolute value bars. And because I've shifted 5 units to the left, it should be 2 times the absolute value of x plus 5.